So to open a video file, press F7 if you're a keyboard person. If you're a mouse person, then you use the mouse and click this button here. That's the open video button on the video toolbar. And you'll notice it's opened the dialog to select the video in a folder called files on my D drive. And it's done that because I've told Spot to always open first of all in that folder because that's where I store my videos. And you can do the same thing if you wish by going to Media, Preferences, clicking on the General tab, and then you set your folder here in the Media Folder field. Just click that button, select the folder, click OK, and Spot will always open uh, the video dialog in that folder. So uh, let's open the video. Let's go Keyboard now, F7. I'm gonna choose an AVI file here. Spot will open all different types of video, but you do need to install a codec pack because um, that will make your life much easier. You can play more formats and playback will be smoother. I'll show you very quickly how you can install K-Lite. Just simply click on the help menu there and then click down, download K-Lite codec pack. So back to the video, F7. We're gonna choose this AVI file here. Click it once, then click open. Now, because this is the first time I'm opening this video, Spot is asking me to confirm the frame rate. And it does that for a reason which I won't go into now. So for the moment, just trust me, Spot knows the frame rate, it just wants you to confirm it. So I'll do that now. Yes, Spot, it's PAL, thank you. Okay, so uh, it's opened the video and it's doing something on the left down here. So you can see, it's, pr it's opened the video, it's playing the video, Spot has also processed the audio. It's created this little waveform from the audio in the video. And it's also searched for shortcuts. And the shortcuts are these vertical red lines here. It does that all at once, the first time that you open a video. Then obviously the data is stored, so you don't have to do it a second time. Um, and it's doing it because I have more options selected here in the media preferences window. I've got on the general tab, this option selected process audio data when first opening a file. And on the tools tab, I've got this option selected in shortcut detection, search for shortcuts when first opening a video file. So I do suggest you have those two options selected because when you do have them selected, you won't have to um, manually go and process the audio data and manually look for shortcuts. If you do have to do it manually, then it's very easy. You'd normally click on this button but because of the way this video is set up to record, you're not gonna see everything I'm doing here. So there's an alternative, and it's up here on the media timeline menu. If you want to process audio data, click that button, or click that menu there. And if you want to find shortcuts, click find shortcuts, which kind of makes sense. Now you'll notice that this video doesn't have burnt in timecode. And that means I don't need to sync Spot's internal timecode, which is shown here with the time code on the video. If I did have to do that, then what I would do is um, go back to the beginning of the video and let's imagine that up here we have burnt in time code and it says 10 o'clock, for example. I'd need to sync this time here in spot with the time on the, on the video. And I do that by clicking this clock. I type 10 there, press enter. And as you can see now, we've set spots uh, time code to start at 10 o'clock. How do we make the video play and pause? Well, it's very easy. All the controls we use for the video are located on the numpad on the keyboard. So five, for example, is play and pause. Number four is frame back. Number six is frame forward. Seven is jump back. Nine is jump forward and so on. And you can change those keys if you'd like. Again, it's in the media preferences window. If you click on media control, you can choose here which keys to use for which particular function. So you could change the play key to something else. You could change the replay length uh, to something else as well. And let's just have a quick look at the video toolbar. You won't use this very often unless you absolutely love using the mouse. 
Um, here we have our little buttons used to control the playback. They're all fairly obvious. This is play, this is pause. This one here is rewind, frame back, frame forward, fast forward, go to last shortcut, go to next shortcut, jump to the in queue of the current subtitle or jump to the out queue of the current subtitle. The little ABC here, this is really just a question of, um, of, of your preference. If you click that button, you'll notice that there's now um, a black background behind the subtitle in the preview window. That's not going to affect the file itself. It's just in case you're having trouble looking at your subtitles on a very you know white background and you want to make them easier to see. So that's purely sort of cosmetic, this one here, ABC. L and R, that's to change the audio balance. So we can choose right channel, stereo or left channel. And the 100 here, that's the playback speed. So I can change that by clicking here and selecting something here. Or I can also use the keyboard, uh, the numpad, it's the subtract and add keys. Along the top here, as I said, that's the internal time code, Spot's internal time code. This is the frame rate here of the video. This is the current position in frames. And over here on the right, that's the duration of the video. Now, when I um, page down between subtitles, you'll notice on, this, on the timeline that the subtitles are being highlighted as I move between them. If you want the video to follow the subtitles as you're editing, then come up to the main toolbar here and click this little button. Make sure that's turned on, it's highlighted in blue. And then watch what happens. If I page down now, the video is following the subtitles. It's jumping to the first, um, it's jumping to the in queue, sorry, of each subtitle. So if you want that to happen, then uh, turn on this little option here. That's not the same, by the way, as reviewing your work with the F8 key. That's a whole different uh, kettle of fish, if that's the expression. If I press F8 and then play, this is rehearse mode. This is showing me what my work will look like when it's actually broadcast. Let's come out of that. Right, I think that's enough for today. Um, we've also got one or two videos available that deal with video problems. So if, for example, you open a video and have sound but no image, then go and have a look at that video and that should help you solve your problem.